शाय Everywhere I go to see men here Good God of mine I'm going to let it shine Hear me now Everywhere I go I'm going to let it shine Jesus gave it to me I declare I'm going to let it Oh I gotta let it shine Jesus I'm gonna let it shine All in my home and see ya Good God Almighty, oh, and I, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 I gotta let it shine. Good God Almighty, in this, I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Looking down 
sin Heaven is looking down, down on me Say it one more time Heaven is looking Heaven is looking down on me when I don't and confused. I know the Lord will see me through. Heaven is looking. People God said amen. 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 One more time. Amen. Anybody know heaven looking down on you? Yes, Anybody know heaven looking down on you? Amen. Don't fool me. Anybody know that heaven is looking down on you? Amen. We know that heaven is looking down on us. We ought to treat our neighbor right. Yes, treat our brothers right. Amen. amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. We give honor to God, our maker, to his son, Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, our covenant, and our guide, to all my father's children, to the mothers, to the deacons, to the, all these preachers, amen. amen. We count another blessing to be in the house of prayer one more time, realizing somebody woke up this morning and didn't give God praise, but I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Because realizing somebody went to bed last night and didn't wake up this morning. The alarm clock is still going off, but it's through his grace and mercy he allowed us to be here. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. We stand tonight in this seven last scenes. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we want to call up our first five speakers. Amen. Amen. Deacon Ernest Walker, Reverend Charles Platt. Deaconess Naomi Jenkins, Reverend Timothy Mallet, and Minister Gussie Rump. Amen. Amen. We want to call them up at this moment. Give them a hand as they Amen. come. Amen. Amen. So I've been told that I have to give rules out tonight. Amen. There's one simple rule. You have seven minutes. Let the Lord use you. You have seven minutes. Amen. Our first speaker tonight is our deacon, one of our very own. Amen. And he'll be coming up with, Father, forgive them for they know not what, what they do. Amen. Following him will be Reverend Charles Platt with truly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise. Yes. Amen. And giving you amens. Amen. amen. Give you your hallelujahs. If, if every now and then throw your hand up. Amen. amen. Talk back to him. Amen. amen. So at this time we'll ask Brother Ernest Walker if he'll come at this time. Amen. Well, I'd like to say good evening to everybody. Y'all heard Pastor Chris, we ain't got but seven minutes, so we got to go ahead on and move on. We're going to keep this train rolling, but we want to we won't dare say anything without giving God honor. We give God praise and give our, give our honor to our pastor, Pastor Chris Williams, to all the ministers of the gospel in the house, to all the program committee for asking me to be on this program. We ain't going to tarry long. Father, forgive them. Amen. 
for they know not what they do. Let's say that again, y'all. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, I look at this and what Jesus said. He, he didn't say, Father, forgive Peter, James, and John. He didn't say that, did he? No. He didn't say, Father, forgive Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But he said, Father, forgive thee. Meaning all of them. I don't believe y'all heard me now. Come on. We, some of us, we got stuff we holding against people for 25 and 30 years. We forgave them yet. But Jesus said, Father, forgive thee. Come on, y'all. Talk with me just a little bit. And I promise you, I'll be out your way in a few seconds. In other words, let us go. Let us go back down memory lane. I'm quite sure. Now y'all know what Friday this is, right? This is the day that he suffered, bled, and he died. All right. All right. You can remember Jesus flashing back. Just, just imagine with me just for a little while. He flashed back. Back to a wedding at Canaan. Jesus looked around at the cross, at the foot of the cross. Saw no one but his beloved disciple John. And his mom standing there. And I can imagine that his mind flashed back to the wedding of Cana. Saying, what happened to all of the ones that were drinking my wine? Huh? He looked all around, but he couldn't see nobody. He made a little trip down memory lane. He went on down on the hillside on the mountain that of Sea of Galilee. Where he with him with two little fish and five barley loaves. Yeah. And he fed over five thousand folk. Yeah. Jesus looked around at the foot of the cross. He couldn't see nobody. Yeah. Let's take another little trip. Let's go on across. Because, see, y'all, I can't stay up here long, y'all. This, this diabetes kicking in on me right now. As you see, I got my glasses around my neck. They don't do no good to put them on when their diabetes kicking on because you can't see no way. But at any rate, he took a trip on cross the Sea of Galilee. He had to go. He thought about the demoniac of Gadara that he drove over 2,000 devils out of. But he looked around at the foot of the cross. Pastor Mallard, he couldn't see nobody. Sister John, please let me borrow your last Sunday, Sunday school lesson. As he stood there okay. looking around for somebody, Come on. but he couldn't see nobody. In his beard and in his hair, he smelled the scent of Chanel number five. I think Sister Jonah said Chanel number five. He smelled the ointment. In his beard and in his hair, he looked around, but he couldn't see nobody. But all oh, he smelled Mary. He smelled Mary. How many of us today can stand up here and really say that we are really forgiving each other? Jesus, after all that they did to him, they whipped him all night long. They spit on him. They pulled his beard out. They, beat, they smacked him with their hand. But he stood there and said, Why? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. I believe, I believe, Pastor Chris, that Jesus was able to say that. Father, forgive them. Because he smelt the Chanel number five. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I would say I truly, to brother, that I enjoyed that. 
And I know they said seven minutes, and usually a preacher be too long, they pull on his coattail. <laughs> but if you notice, I'm not wearing a coat. <laughs> so, and I've been given the honor to truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. So many times, and I, it, it, I thought of many days and many times that a day like this, or coming up to Easter, or doing Easter services, I think about Jesus on the cross. And many times, that you, I think about the nails in his hand, and you just for a brief second, pinch yourself on the back of the hand, and imagine the nails that are coming through. But just for a little while ago, I never thought about this thief on the cross. And I began to look at a couple characteristics of this thief on the cross. And in many ways, he reminded me of myself. It's saying that he was a thief, but we all have our sins. We might not be what we used to be. He done brought us all a mighty long way. But when, when I think about the this him thief, and when, you, when he chose Jesus, he chose want a redemption at this time. Remember the two was having the conversation And the other one was saying in a selfish tone I mean if you're Jesus Why don't you save yourself And then save us But the other one said leave him alone Can't you see he in the same predicament as us And he ain't did nobody wrong but the Bible tells us that the thief that was talking, surely, and he's saying that we are getting our just due. We are guilty, and it's just like this here thief on this cross, you and I have been guilty Amen. before. Amen. But I want to let you know this today, that although that we have been guilty, although we have been in sin, and sometimes we get what I call spiritual amnesia, a spiritual Alzheimer's. On, you know, and, and I explain to you what that is, that spiritual Alzheimer's. You know they're saying that with Alzheimer's you can remember way back. But you can't remember your short term memory. Your short term memory is gone. With spiritual Alzheimer's, we can remember what everybody else did, but we can't remember a thing that we don't yeah. have to say. And, 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 but I want to let you know what Paul said. We all have sinned and came short of the glory. In other words, we're awesome, used to be something. But, and we ain't always been sitting around the church house all the time. Or sometimes acting holier than thou. Just like this him thief admitted that we didn't I would just do. Because we was guilty. We were thieves. But I want to let you know in this here short time. Another word come to mind that is not in these scriptures. That is hope. If you look at this thief. He done admitted his sins. Uh -huh. But he realized the right one to call on. He said, Jesus, just remember me. Uh -huh. And Jesus saying to him that truly you shall be with me this day in paradise. And, and I want to let you know that I don't matter what you've been through, what you have been, or what you have done. That is hope. Because he's saying that did, and today, I don't care what your troubles is, your trials, your tribulation that you might be going through, whatever sin that you have committed, just call on Jesus. And you'll find that today you can still be with him in paradise. There is still hope. And this thief had the sense that he made a change somewhere. It might have even been on the cross to saying, I need redemption. I need to go to Christ. And I'm calling on him. Right now, they're saying, just remember me. A lot of times that you can't say nothing else, but Father, just remember me. Remember me, Father, that I'm the one that's been trying so hard. Remember me, Father, that I've been the one that knocked down every time, but I to get back up again with your help, Father. Remember me. Remember me, Father, they got mad with me for trying to tell them right from wrong. Remember, Father, they got mad with me because they didn't, I wasn't treating them like they wanted to be treated and the way that they wanted to be treated just didn't line up with your word. But remember me, Father. I'm the one, Lord, that told them that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. I'm the one that told them what prophets of man to gain the whole world and lose this soul. There is hope today. 
And I want to let you know about paradise. We picture paradise and long time coming up, I picture paradise with the palm trees on the beach. With the white sand and the blue waters. But I want to let you know it and it's, and, and it's kind of, it's, it's, it'll be a good lesson that you cannot do in seven minutes. When we think about paradise, remember when Jesus told the women, he's saying, touch me not. I have not yet ascended. So he hadn't been to heaven yet. So he couldn't have took the thief to heaven. When he stepped out on resurrection, he said, I have not have sinned to me rise up. I have not went to my father yet. But I say that to say this. You get Jesus, you can have paradise. Amen. Right down here. Amen. Amen. You come on up, Sister Bussy. We thank Brother Walker and Reverend Platt for that grace and mercy narrative. Amen. Amen. That's all that was, grace and mercy. After this solo, we will have Deaconess Naomi Jenkins with Woman Behold Your Son and Reverend Timothy Mallow with My God, My God, Why Have You Forsaken Me? Praise God. Good messenger. This is the first time that I've sang with my cousin singing at the same time. This is the last generation of my mother's family. So I feel really proud today. God is alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the sun of God this close and he walks right. with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own of his voice is so sweet the birds heard them singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart Yeah. 
don't know about you, but let me tell you about me and what it means to me to be at the foot of the cross. Because Jesus welcomes sinners, then I ought to be there. What about you? He welcomes sinners at the foot of the cross. And at the foot of the cross, I heard that there was some forgiveness there also. So now I'm making it to the foot of the cross because the forgiveness is what I need. Come on. Amen. And from the foot of the cross, he saved a wretch like me. And I ain't talking about you, I'm talking just about you. And, 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 and I have a question for you because my time is almost up. What is it that brings you to the foot of the cross? And I just want you to come to the foot of the cross with me every now and then. And surely, surely, I can guarantee you, he'll welcome you there. You see, when you're standing at the foot of the cross, a lot of things can happen to you. Yeah. I tell you, you can be changed. Yeah. That person that you used to know ain't there no more. Yeah. That person that caused you to lose it one every now and then, or once upon a time, it ain't there no more. Yeah. See, when you're standing at the cross, you've been changed. Amen. You can gain a new spirit at the cross. Yeah. Now, if you're standing at the foot of the cross and, and you have not uh, have a problem or uh, had a problem in the past treating people right, mm -hmm. and you're standing at the foot of the cross and you ain't love your neighbor like you ought to, mm -hmm. you need to stand now just a little bit longer. <laughs> because I can guarantee you that the God that I know and serve can make it all right. Yeah. Because now, I, 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 I Tell everybody, at the foot of the cross is where you want to be. Yeah. They said, but no, no. They said, there was a lot going on at the foot of the cross. I said, but that's where you want to be. Yeah. You see, at the foot of the cross that day, all the believers that was in around, surrounding, they became believers. Yeah. And at the foot of the cross that day, all will become brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. And at the foot of the cross that day, we all become one family of God. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I tell folks over and again, and I say it all the time, you need to be redeemed. You need to be redeemed. And at the foot of the cross, you can be redeemed. And at the foot of the cross, you ought to have some kind of loving relationship with each other. And my question to you today as I go to my seat, are you standing at the foot of the cross? All right. Amen. Have he brought you out of something that you thought you couldn't get out of? Right. Has, he been, has he been where he needed to be for you in the time of the storm? Yes. Right. Lord, you ought to be here. Lord, you ought to know him at the foot of Amen. the cross. Amen. Now there's love at the foot of the cross. Amen. There's peace no, at the foot of the cross. Amen. There's joy at the foot of the cross. My, 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 that Jesus welcoming you yeah. at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Uh, again, you ought to know who I know. You ought to know the man. Amen. You ought to know that he'll supply all your needs. Oh, yeah. yeah. He'll love you when you don't love yourself. Yeah. He'll stick with you like no other man. Yeah. Yeah. He'll walk with you. Yeah. He'll talk to you. Yeah. He'll let you know that he's God all night. Yeah. He'll take care of you and your children. Yes. He'll let you know that there, he's there in the time of the storm. Yes. I want you to know you. that you need to be at the cross. Right. That joy at the cross. Yes. That love at the cross. Yes.
Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord another good hand clap for prayer. Amen. At the feet of the cross. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. How many know we serve a God that is worthy, y'all? I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here today. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, our next one is coming from Matthew 27, 46. But I'm going to begin in the 45th verse when it said, Now from the sixth hour, that were darkened over all the land of the earth. Somebody said, over all the land of the earth. Until the ninth hour. And the Bible goes on that 46 verse and says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a what kind of voice? A loud voice. What did he say? Eli! Eli! Mama, some people thunders. This is to say, my God, my God, why have died for Satan? Man. Glory to God. It's going to come a time in your walk with God, you're going to feel forsaken. I heard Sister May, she was all in it. It's going to come a time you're going to feel like God don't hear you. But I stop by to tell you that sin separates you from God. Amen. When Jesus was taken on the sin of the world, the Bible said from the sixth to the ninth hour there was darkness. I want y'all to understand that darkness represents sin. Not that he had sin. The Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 that for he was made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus went to the cross because he so loved the world. It was his purpose to die on that cross. That was his main purpose for coming down on this earth. Sometimes you feel like you forsake, sometimes you feel like God don't come the way you want him to come. And sometimes Satan would, Satan would attack you and want you to curse God and die. Right. But I stop by to encourage you. Don't get to that point where you want to curse God and die. Right. I have seen people lost their loved one. Just felt like throwing up the tower. I have seen people when things don't go their way. They want to just give up on God. But I read somewhere I have not seen the righteous for safety. A seed begging bread. It's going to come a time in your life you got to realize who Jesus is. Amen. He's not far from you. You may feel like he's far from you, but he's not far from you, sir. He wants you to know. He still wants you to cry out. Yeah. It's going to come a time in your life you're going to have to cry out to God. Amen. It's going to come a time in your life you're going to have to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. When you learn how to call on the name of the Lord, that's when you realize that you can defeat the enemy. But the Bible said the enemy goes around as a war lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's his job to devour you. But as Christians, we got to be strong in this thing, brother. Because he, do, he desired to do two things. He desired to have you, and he desired to sift you as weak. But Jesus said, I have prayed that your faith fails not. Then he goes on first. He said, when thou are converted, yeah, yeah. then you can strengthen your brother. That's when you're going to come a time you're going to have to strengthen one another. You're going to have to encourage yourself because I learned now that church folks ain't going to encourage you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You got to encourage yourself when you feel forsaken because if you don't, the enemy is going to have you doing things that you ain't got no business doing. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, how many of you know? You'll go right back to doing what you were doing before. But I stopped by to let you know tonight, don't be like Lot Rye. Don't be like Lot Rye. Don't look back. Because it ain't nothing back there but the devil. But stay steadfast on the Lord. I guarantee you, he'll make a way. Out of nowhere. John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God, 
to take away the sin of the world. That's what Jesus was doing. He was taking away the sin of the world. But God turned his back on his only begotten son. Not because he didn't love him. Because it was the will of God. When Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed three times. He said, Lord, if thou will, let this cup pass from me. He said, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. From birth to death, Satan was trying to kill him. But defeat Satan when he died on cross. When he said, it is finished. He died, y'all. If he had never died, we would not have the right to the tree of life. But I don't know about you, but I'm glad he died on that cross. I'm glad he went to the cross and died for you and I. But I stop by to let you know today, when you feel like you need to encourage yourself, it's one thing I learned about the devil. He don't like for you to say no weapon form against these shall prosper. And one thing I learned about the devil, he don't like for you to say, great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Oh, no, 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 no. See, that's how you encourage yourself. That's when you sometimes when you feel like you've been for Satan, you got to encourage yourself. He don't like it when you say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continue to be in my mind. He don't like it when he say, oh, chase and see how good God is. He don't like it. When you give God praise. Yeah. But I stop by to let you know. When you feel for Satan. Just call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. I guarantee you. He'll make a way. Yeah. I pray that you've been blessed. By the word of God. Yeah. The word of God for the people of God. And at this turn, we'll ask Minister Gussie Rump if she would come forward with, I thirst. Amen. 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 Father God, I just come to Heavenly Father to say thank you for all your many blessings that you have bestowed upon me, this house, God, and people all over this land and country. I realize there's trouble in the land, but God, as long as we keep our eyes on you, Amen. you promise you will never leave us nor forsake us. Everything will be all right. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus name. I do give honor to the pastor of this house and to each and every one of you in your prospective places. I thirst. Over 2,000 years ago, he was thirsty indeed. After our soul, he was thirsting for us because he had a purpose when he came to earth. You and I have a purpose if we walk in it. If we was to walk in our purpose, you know, we would see such a change on this earth. That we've never seen before. Amen. We can't be ashamed. We can't wait on brother, sister, friend to come. We have to go when God calls us to go. Sometimes you got to go by yourself. Amen. And guess what? You're not by yourself. Called. God promised he would never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. When I think about all the trouble and trials and tribulation that are going on in the world today. I read a scripture that said that we're having all these trials and tribulation because we are not walking in enough love yet. Well, love don't hurt. Amen. Love builds up. Amen. Love support. Amen. Love gives. Yeah. Love will forgive yeah. those that had hurt you and done you wrong. Yeah. Because we have a pattern that we have to follow, and that's Jesus Christ. None of us has been treated as badly as he had been treated. Amen. But yet 
he never gave up what God called him to be. Matter of fact, he said, Father, prepare me a body. I'll go down. Every day, man. He gave his life for us. And he sit high and look low. And he waiting on us to take our step. Who, who I call you to be. You can't wait on mama. You can't wait on brother. You can't wait on nobody but the word of the Lord. Amen. When Jesus was dying on the cross, when he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? He wasn't questioning. He wasn't questioning God. When he said, oh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was not questioning God. He was quoting the first line of Psalm 22, a deep expression of the pain he felt when he took on the sin of the world, Amen. which caused him to be separated from his father. That's why he cried out. And that's the reason we should be crying out because you know what? We can't make this journey on our own. We need the man that died for our sin. I don't know about you, but I've been through too much. I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the final word. God has the final word. Until we get into a place that we realize that, recognize that, and walk in the faith that we should have when we know a man called Jesus, Amen. we will see a change in this world. Amen. We will see transformation of souls that we never seen before. But we have to be who God calling us to be. We worrying about everybody else. Instead of looking in the mirror. Amen. When we stop looking at everybody else and start looking in the mirror, mirror a change will come. Because you will want to be who God called you to be thirst. I got a thirst of my own now. Amen. I'm thirsting after Jesus. Amen. So I come to a place that I know friends said they'll be there, but guess what? When you really need it, they're not there. But I know a man that I don't care if in the midnight hour when I wake up sick, guess what? I can call on me. He'll come see about me. He done done it. I know he's able. And when you get to a place that you know what you know, <laughs> nobody can lead you astray. But sometimes it's a lonely place, y'all. But guess what? I ain't lonely. Because I know what I gotta go. He said, he'll be there. He'll be there. We got to stop depending on people that's leading us astray. That taking us away from God. Sometimes it can be a lonely place if we don't know who he is. But I promise you, when you start trusting him and doing the will of the Father, yeah, trouble going to come. But guess what? We serve a God can handle your trouble. Whatever you're going through. He big enough. He strong enough. He wide enough. He high enough. I don't care where you are. You will never be lost to him. If we separate ourselves from God. That's the only separation uh -huh. that it's going to be because he keeps his word. Yeah. He promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. We got to get to a place uh -huh. that we have to look around and see what's going on in the world today and make a change. Yeah. We in a place where if brother don't go, if sister don't go, if husband don't go, if wife don't go, I don't go. Uh -uh. This is a journey, y'all, we got to take back for ourselves. And it's an individual choice. Yes. And after you make that choice and you walk in your faith and you walk your walk in, it's too much talking. I preached that one time. Too much talking and not enough walking. Yes. We can talk a good talk, but can you walk the walk? We need to be light barrels. We need to be who God called us to be. We need to walk in the faith. And we need to... You, you know, I, I preached one time about cliques in the church, too. I've never seen so many cliques in the church in my life. And they are not clicking for Jesus, either. They messy. And it's time to stop. I don't mind being by myself. I 
I don't hang with no cliques. If you ain't clicking for Jesus, that's one thing. You know. If you ain't clicking for Jesus, guess what? I will not hang with you. It take a well made up mind. And you can say, well, I need friends. We need Jesus. We need to repent of our sin. We need to walk the walk and stop talking the talk and stop letting people lead us astray. We lonely because we ain't in the Word. We ain't studying what His Word says. You read this Word daily. I get up at 4.30 every morning. I have learned to read and study His Word. I have trust Him that whatever going on on my job, that He will make it all right when I get there. Amen. When you have that kind of faith in God, you, you, you can walk around with a smile. You can do some good things for the Lord. People will ask you, why are you always smiling? Amen. Why are you so faithful? I don't care if you overlook me, what you ever you do. I know a man. That's what for me is for me. Can't nobody take it, but guess what? You can give it away. But can't nobody take it. Now, I have a place in my life right now. I've been through, I done had a heart attack. I done had my intestine stroke. And I'm still here. Diabetes since 1998. I'm still standing. Why? Because I believe in the man from Galilee. Dr. Jesus. My friend Jesus. My Savior Jesus. I thirst after Jesus Christ. God bless you. We thank Minister Rupp for those words. With us, Reverend Mallard and Deaconess Jenkins. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have a brother solo by Brother Freddie Williams, and following that solo, we'll have Reverend Johnny General with Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And the last word by Reverend Larry Moore. It is finished. Amen. 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 This is a song that we can all participate in because the Lord has been good to all of us. And if you know the song, sing it from your heart. Don't sing it just to make sound. Sing it to Jesus like you know he's been good to you. I thought that was just that quiet little lady up to the bank. <laughs> she never said nothing like that at the bank. <laughs> Don't forget to give me a little piece of it, Freddie, because I got to put my part in. You know you've been so good. Lord, you know you've been so good. Yes, you have. You watch over me all night long. Lord, I know you've been so good. Say it one more time, there. Lord, I know you've been so good. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, I know you've been so good. You yeah. watch over me all night long. Yeah. Lord, I know you've been so good. Jesus, sing the song. I've been wrong in my life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've even sin. But Lord, we thank you for just waking me up this morning and letting me kneel down and pray again. That's why I keep my hand in the winding chair. Yeah. Every day of my life I'm trusting in your name. You've been good. You've been good. Yes, you have. Hey, been mighty nice. You 
know you've been so good to me. Lord, I know you spent my life. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Lord. Lord, I know you spent my life. Mm -hmm. You watched over me all night long. Lord, I know you spent my life. You know, I could have been dead. In my grave, but you told old death to get on back, stay away, and you know you you made it behave. I could be dead, sleeping in my grave. Oh, oh Lord, and baby, behave. My mother, Lord, you've been my father too. And all the jobs and trials I've had in my life, without you, Lord, I don't know what I do. That's why I keep my hands in the winding chain of everything in my life. Father too, out of all of the troubles and trials that I had in my life, thought you, Lord, what would I do? That's why I got my hands in the water chain. Every day of my life, I'm trusting in your name. You've been good. Tell me, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. Gee, uh, you have been, been out at night. You were done, you You was going to roll in. You was Moses. You been good. Bush burning. You been good. You was Joshua. You been good. Mighty battle You was Lazarus. You been good. Resurrector, you've been good. You're my joy. You've been good. When I'm in sorrow, you've been good. You're my hope. You've been good. Yeah, for tomorrow, you've been good. You've been a friend, you've been good. When I was lonely, you've been good. You fed me, you've been good. When I was hungry, Lord, you've been good. You kept me, you've been good. You never left me. You've been good. You brought me. You've been good. Lord, I know you taught me. You've been good. You've been a mother. You've been good. When I needed someone to talk. You've been good. Somebody don't have a mother. You've been good. Gone on home. You've been good. Mama gone, no. you been good. Makes me feel like lost my time and long. Can I get a witness that the Lord is good? Can I get a witness that the Lord walks by his side? I know you've been so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ain't it been good? Thank you, Lord. I know you, 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 been good. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Ain't the Lord been good to us? Somebody ought to be able to go without somebody having to put a fire under you to tell you that God has been good. Shouldn't nobody have to orchestrate our praise to know that God has been good. Some of us get beside ourselves sometimes. We think our money brought us. Some of us sometimes feel like our degrees brought us. But I want you to know there's a lot of people that got degrees that are not blessed. There's a lot of people that got money that are not blessed. But if God has been good to you, I mean if he's truly been good to you, you ought to be able to praise God and call out on the name of Jesus. Thank you. You've been mighty good to me. Amen. 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 There's evidence that God has been good to us. And that evidence is that we ain't what we used to be. Somebody here know that where you used to be, you ain't there no more. Somebody know that the things you used to say, you don't say no more. But there was a price that had to be paid to get you where you are today. We, we didn't get there on our own. It was the Lord who made us and not we ourselves. Anybody who tried to make yourself, you didn't do nothing but make a mess. There was a price paid at Calvary that got you and I where we are today. And as we listen to these sayings of Jesus, he was uttering out everything that he paid to get you and I where we have to be today. And the one that I'm going to deal with is in Luke chapter 23, verse 26. 46. Mm-hmm. My Lord. I give honor to the interim pastor here and all the other ministers here on the roster, all of the minister wives, and everyone who is sitting in this audition, because if there was no need for you to be here, God wouldn't have us to be here. And the reading, when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. I want to start out by saying I believe as Pontius Pilate mm -hmm. had stayed in a human's place. Mm -hmm. If he had stayed in a place where he thought he was extending himself above, he would have found out some things about Jesus that he didn't know. Right. I read in the Bible where Pontius Pilate said, who and what do you have to say for yourself? Don't you know that I have power to take your life or to save your life? Throughout that entire episode where they took Jesus through this kangaroo court, Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. But when Pilate opened his mouth and said that he had the power to take Jesus' life, Jesus spoke up. Jesus said, no man can take my life. I lay my life down and I have the power to pick it up again. And when we got here on this skull-shaped hill called Calvary, uh -huh. didn't the Lord do just what he said he would do? Yeah. Lord, into thy hand uh -huh. I commend my spirit. That spirit paid a price right. for you and I that flesh and blood could not pay. Right. There had to be a penalty paid for our sin. Uh -huh. and, and sisters, I want you to know, because most of y'all go pay the bills, if you take Georgia Power money, Oh. And go put it in the water folk hand Your light bill hadn't been paid Come on, Now if you take somebody else's money And give it to somebody else You haven't paid that person yet uh -huh. So you say well what that got to do with Jesus Putting his spirit in, in, in the hand of the father He said father into thine hand I'm going to put the payment for sin I'm going to put this where it ought to be In the father's hand I trust that I've done everything That the spirit has called me to do I said, give me a body, and I'll go down and I'll redeem man back unto you. That redemption came with a price. We sang the song, Lord, I am redeemed. I'm bought with a price. Where do you think that money came from to buy it? It wasn't no physical money, but I heard the scripture say, give that to God, which is God, and give that to Caesar, which is Caesar. I want you to know that that penalty that was paid for you and I, it's the same thing that Jesus paid me and he put it in the hands of the Father. He said, Father, into thine hand I commit the payment for Reverend General's sin. Father, into thy hand I commend the spirit for these that, that wouldn't forgive at the cross. I gave this for those who did not show up at the cross at my crucifixion. I put this in your hand, Father. 
I put it in your hand for those who didn't know how to love. And Father, I put it in your hand for those who brought me to this place and crucified me. Father, into your hand, I commend my spirit. Somebody might be saying, well, what do that word commend mean? It means I entrust you with what you gave me. How many of us can trust our friends? Long enough to say, well, I'm going out of town for a week. I'm going to commend my keys to my house. I'm going to give you the keys to my car, and I want you to watch it until I come back. But Jesus said, Father, I put this, this precious spirit in your hand. Jesus put it in the hand of the Father because he knew he was faithful enough to put it right back in his on the day of resurrection. You got to realize today that our faith it's not in what we think about. Yeah. Our faith is not in what we talk about. Yeah. Our faith is what we see and what we heard. Yeah. Why do you say heard? Because faith comes by hearing. Yeah. You see, God didn't have to listen to what Jesus said. Uh -huh. He didn't have to hear it come out of Jesus' mouth. Yeah. We serve an all-knowing God. Yeah. He could have read Jesus' mind about everything he said at the cross. Yeah. But there was a reason yeah. why Jesus cried out with this loud voice. So you and I can hear and be a witness to everything that he said. Yes. The resurrection and the death of Jesus, mm -hmm. it didn't need any works. Mm -mm. It needed to have a witness. a witness. Now you and I today, we are witnesses. That's why we're here, witnesses one to another. Yes. That at the cross, there was a price paid for you and I. Yes. There was a price paid for all the wrong that we've done. That there was a price paid for him to be uh, Abel's vindicator. There was a price paid for him to be Noah's ark. There was a price paid for him to be Abraham's sacrifice. There was a price paid for him being the wheel in the middle of the wheel. There was a price paid for him being your way out of no way. There was a price paid for him being your bridge over troubled waters. There was a price paid at Calvary's cross for sin. And Jesus said, Father... Into thine hand I commend my spirit Glory hallelujah Somebody don't know when to shout If it had not been for what Jesus did at Calvary I look back and I wonder where Where would I be Somebody always calling on Abraham, Isaac and Jacob I ain't got to look back that far I'm going to call back on my life Because I can look back to when I was a mess undone But because of what he did at Calvary's cross I'm able to stand here today and say I am, I am. and I am redeemed yeah. and I give glory to the God yeah. and I give glory to Jesus yeah. that he did just what he said he was going to do. Yeah. He became the propitiation of my sin yeah. and he said father into thine hand yeah. I commend my spirit. Yeah. Glory to God. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. If we know really what's going on, say amen again. Amen. This ain't about an egg that you're going to find Sunday morning. That's right. It's about a Savior mm -hmm. that came, hung, bled, and died mm -hmm. so that you and I would have a right to the tree of life. Amen. But there had to be a price paid like my brother said. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be thankful we ask the question, why are we here? Uh -huh. Because we are here because something was finished. And I'm to just hit on Jesus' last few words from the cross. And it is found in the book of John, chapter 19, verse 30. And it says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I stopped by to tell you just for a little while. Hey Amen. The, the, the vinegar that Jesus was giving. It was further ridicule of our Lord and Savior. Hey Amen. He was offered uh, another substance with gall in it a little earlier to subdue him of the pain. But, but sometime in life, church, when uh, frustrations come in your life, when tragedy come in your life, you have to accept the pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And know that if you call on the name of the Lord, oh, yeah. 
you shall be saved. See, I don't believe that, amen, that he brought me this far just to leave me. See, I learned to lean and depend on the Lord. Because, see, hanging on the cross in a ridiculous, a ridiculous uh, state, state of torture, my Lord thought about me. You, 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 you see, he said that it is finished. We come to realize that prophecy had been fulfilled. Amen. Amen. The scripture had been fulfilled. You, you, you see, I serve a God and I preach a God that can do anything but fail. Amen. If he tells me, amen, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I can step out in the darkness no matter what the enemy throws at me. I can tell the enemy, you finished. It is finished. Amen. See, and what I like about it here, if someone gives you a task to perform, and they tell you, well, I want you to go here and I want you to do that. And I want you to go through this. Right. Amen. Even if God were to bring us through it, unscaled, unhurt. When we get on the other side, mm -hmm. we would say, I'm finished. Right. But Christ dare not say that I'm finished. Because if he had said, I am finished, he would have been given in to defeat upon his death. Right. But he said, it is finished. He wasn't talking about, amen, the things that he done. He was talking about the things that the Father sent him to fulfill. But we have a faithful God. Faithful even to the death on the cross. I am so glad that he said that it is finished. Amen. And I'm going to cut it a little short. I'm sitting here earlier trying to hold the flood. While the other preachers pour water in the pond. But I stop by to tell you, no matter what you're going through, if you are an alcoholic, you can tell the alcohol is finished. If you are a drug addict, you can tell the drug is finished. If you're suffering, going through some things, you can tell your suffering is finished. If you're going through, don't know uh, what tomorrow gonna bring. Uh, tell that destitute it's finished. Uh, I stop by to tell you, we serve God. He came down through 40 and two generations. He told the Father, it's finished. They took my Savior, whipped him all night long because by his stripes, uh, you and I are here. So he told the strap, it's finished. Uh, Burdens are heavy. He bear the cross. When burdens on your shoulder, tear the burdens. It's finished. My God took them up carried here. Amen. When they tell you uh, you ain't gonna amount to nothing, tell them uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tell the world things I used to do. It's finished. Things I used to say. It's finished. What I realized as he laid there, stretched wide, hung high, he did it for you and I. They tell me when they lifted him up, somebody said a long time ago, if I be lifted up from the world, I will draw all men unto me. He told the Father, I'm lifted up. It's finished. He hung there all night Friday, all night Saturday, but early Sunday morning, he said, it's finished. See, all that stuff that's binding you and keeping you from having a relationship with God. See, church in Christ, you can tell that stuff is finished. I can tell the world. Mm. Woo! Amen. When the world throw rocks, right. you finished. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, yeah. if it ain't if you ain't Christ, uh -huh. when Jesus was on the other side, yeah. fasting, the devil showed up. Uh -huh. 
said, if you be who you say you are, I command you turn these stones into bread. See, Jesus had more than one way of telling the devil that he was finished. But when he got up Sunday morning, he served notice to the devil, you finished. Let the church say amen. 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 One more time. Amen. Thank God for the cross. Amen. As I stand to give the invitation to discipleship, I want you to put your mind on the cross. It was Jesus, Jesus. on the cross. Amen. 